or salsa. So I'm going to show you a little technique here. I've got a piece of onion that I'm going to cut up into small pieces. And then I'm going to do what in Spanish is called desflemando la cebolla, the flaming the onion, because a lot of people, I even saw people here when I said I like to put onion in the guacamole, sort of scrunch up their nose like, oh no, I would never put gua uh, that, because what most people are thinking of is number one, the flavor of yellow onion, and number two, <laughs> th that sort of strong onion flavor. Now, here's all you have to do. I've got a little strainer, it doesn't have to be this kind, any kind of little strainer. You put your chopped onion in there, and then you rinse it off. That's all you really have to do. Now, when you chop up, and you have to rinse it off with Fiji water, okay? <laughs> this will not work if you don't have Fiji water to do this with. I have cooked on so many stages with no, no running water, and the very first time somebody handed me a bottle of Perrier and said, here, use this for your cleanup, I was just so flabbergasted. I, now I'm used to it. I mean, it's like every place I go, I'm rinsing onions with Fiji water. But you can actually put them under cold running water and rinse them off. It'll do exactly the same thing. You don't have to use the Fiji. And what you're doing, when you, when you cut into, um, into a, an onion, you break cell walls bringing two compounds together and that compound the new compound is a sulfurous compound that's what makes your eyes water that's what you know leaves that onion breath it may, it's it spoils fast it's what makes people's stomachs upset you can get rid of it <laughs> just wash it off and so in mexico they have three different ways that they do it rinse it in water, rinse it in water with a little bit of uh, vinegar, or actually toss it with vinegar or lime juice and let it sit for a little bit, almost pickling the onion for that. But you can do it just very simply by rinsing it off with water. So we've got our onion now to add. That, that will be light and bright flavor. It'll also be crunchy, crisp. I'm gonna add a little bit of chopped fresh tomato. We're coming to the very end of our tomato season in Chicago. You know, I'm a huge proponent of, of uh, local agriculture. And so in the city, we have these burgeoning small farms, including one right behind my house. You've seen, if you've watched our TV show, you've seen my big production garden where we grow all the lettuces and herbs and specialty flowers and stuff like that for our restaurant. Well, we also use the top of our restaurant as another one of our farms, and we grow in these self-watering boxes. We have 85 boxes that we grow on upstairs in front above our restaurant. And this last, we got one ton of tomatoes and chilies off of our roof wow. this last summer. And we're just coming to the end of it. The last few pieces are just right over here. And this reminds me, this is a Castelludo Genovese. And it's a, one of my favorite tomatoes because it is very closely related to the, 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 the actual the parent of this one is one from Oaxaca in the southern part of Mexico that they call Zapotec pleated. Now, if you are a tomato grower, then I recommend that you go to one of those. It's in pretty much every site that carries heirloom tomatoes, but grow it sometime. You'll love it. It's high acid, which is what I like. I want a tomato to have a balance between acid and sweet. If it's just all about sweet, I don't like it very much. I want to put lime juice on it so that I get some, some acid there. But in this situation where we have the, the, the Zapotec pleader or the Castelludo Genovese, it's got all that natural acid in there. So now we started to add chunkier things to our guacamole. And the, we, this is the point at which we have to decide whether the guacamole is going to be spicy or not. Like I said, in Mexico, they don't typically make spicy guacamole because you're going to have salsa with it. So the salsa will be the spicy part of it. And this will be almost a cooling thing. And usually you would think about a little serrano or jalapeno, a green chili, to go with the green of the avocado, keeping everything fresh and light and beautiful. But in this particular case, we're moving in a direction that is quite different. We first started with the, the flat leaf parsley that was kind of unexpected. And then we're gonna choose for our chili 
at Chipotle. Now, I don't know if everybody's worked with Chipotle, but this is one thing that I always have in my, my cupboard at home because it's a smoke-dried jalapeno chili that has been rehydrated in a tomatoey broth. The tomatoey broth is super delicious. You ever want to like blow people away with uh, barbecue sauce? You can even buy a, a good barbecue sauce and just add the tomatoey broth from this to that. It's spicy and hot and sweet and it's just beautiful with barbecue sauce. So when you dig these guys out here, you'll see that they look like red, small red jalapenos. Let's see if I can that one that I pulled up there was really tiny. There's one that looks like regular. So like a, just a small jalapeno, red. And it's when you smell it, it's gonna have that really beautiful smoky flavor like a barbecue. It'll actually seem a little bit like barbecue sauce. So I've got some of that already over here that chopped up. You can take the seeds out of it if you want. And you can make this as spicy or not spicy as you wish. And then all of that gets mixed together. And here's the ringer. Now we have this tradition in our house that when the first tomato is ripe, we make a big deal out of making bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. It's like, it's the celebration of the very first tomato from the backyard. And it's not just anything, you know, we go to this one bakery where we get this what kind of bread, thank goodness we all agree on what kind of mayonnaise to use. We have our really good bacon from one of our local uh, pig farmers. We have the beautiful tomatoes. We have lettuce from our garden. So it's like this is a real celebration of probably one of the best tasting dishes in the whole world. And it's just a simple dish, but we can make sure that all the parts of it are right. But in our house, one of the things we like to do is slice an avocado and put on that bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich because I love the way that avocado and bacon goes. So maybe you know where I'm going with this. So this guacamole becomes now a bacon and tomato guacamole because I love that combination of those two things. So maybe when you came in, you smelled bacon. I just did that to entice you all, okay? I'm not really going to use that stuff that's in the pan there because I have nice crisp bacon already chopped up here, but I'm going to sprinkle that oh, into the guacamole, stir it up, put that into a little bowl for serving here. Now, a couple of little notes about guacamole is if you want it to stay as bright and beautiful as possible. Keep it cold. Okay? If you've hung around that guacamole bowl at a party, <laughs> looking down at it, thinking what a sad mess that stuff looks like, <laughs> they probably didn't have it over some ice, something cold. If you want to make your guacamole a few hours ahead, it's fine to do. Just press plastic wrap right down on the surface, keeping all the air out, put it in your refrigerator in the coldest part, chill your bowl. I even bought a special bowl that you stick in the freezer, like, a, you know those um, the ice cream makers where you freeze the bowl? It's that kind of thing. You can put that in the freezer, and then it'll stay cold, cold, cold for several hours. And so th think about how you can do it. Another thing that I do that, I, that is really easy is you take a flower pot, preferably not one that you have used, and you put some water on it so it's soaked, stick it in your refrigerator, and that will hold cold for a long time. And then you just nestle your bowl of guacamole down into the cold flower pot. It has to be wet though, because that's what really keeps that, that cold in there. And it'll hold cold for a really long time. So that little tip there. Okay, so we've got, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more bacon because I can, because I have lots of it up here, and I sort of have that you can never have too much bacon school. So we've got all of our ingredients now for a bacon and tomato guacamole. So I'm going to move those things out of the way, and we're going to move over into another direction. And this sort of goes to live fire cooking, but I have to say I have almost no live fire here. So we're just pretending that we're all hanging around my grill at home, and I'm going to show you a, a dish from the Yucatan that is is so easy to do 
in so much of a place because it's seasoned with achiote, achiote being the main spice from the Yucatan. 